Welcome back. So if you watched last week's Tea with Brie episode, you already know that this is literally just a continuation. I'm still sitting in the same spot. It has literally been two minutes since I turned off the last video. Um, I'm drinking the same tea, so if you didn't watch last week's episode, you might be a little bit lost, but that's okay. I'm going to try to be thorough. I, I mean, I'm not really backtracking. I just had a lot that I wanted to talk about, and it, the video was getting way too long. So, just really quick, got my Valentine's Day mug with the hearts on it. Um, and our tea is Harney and Sons um, Vanilla Comodoro. Comodoro? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Comodoro. Um... Yeah, and you can go back and watch that video first if you want to. Um, so, when I left off, we were talking about January's topic in my group. I, like, moderate a, um, I admin a health-focused group. It's not really just about weight loss, but it's about health. And so, our topic for January was breaking habits. Um, and so, I talked about the habits that I broke and, you know, mm-hmm. So February's topic is heart health because it's heart health month. Um, and the topic is not just about your physical heart, which I mean, heart health is great. You know, eat your oatmeal, whatever it is you do for your heart health, take a run, all that stuff. But it's also about your emotional heart. So, you know, for physical heart, um, for me, um, just eating low carb, like I feel so much better. And I know like it might sound crazy, but I know that when I eat too many carbs, like for instance, during the holidays, like I can tell when I'm eating too many carbs because my heart starts beating heavy. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it just feels heavy while it's trying to beat. Like, it's like digestion is sucking the life out of me and my heart is doing all that it can to get enough energy to continue beating like that's really what it feels like it, it feels kind of scary but I know that it'll go away so like I don't get like worked up about it but anyway um so that's what I'm doing for my physical heart health but then um like I talk about your emotional heart your figurative heart right so one of my really good friends just went through like a terrible breakup. I mean, they've been together for years and she's struggling with it. I mean, as she should. I mean, if you spend that many years with somebody and then it's just over with, like, I don't know how you could not struggle with that. You know what I mean? And so I just really talk about, like, I just really want to talk about, like, taking care of your metaphorical heart your emotional heart whatever however you want to phrase it you know um taking care of your heart like how do you do that how do you guys do that like what do you do that takes care of you and i mean a lot of this is like self-care um what like what do you do for self-care because that's something that's gonna like protect your heart it's, when you're stressed out you're not protecting your heart and I don't like I'm not trying to sound philosophical here like I'm just for real for real like you gotta take care of both hearts and what better time to think about that than in heart health month um so yeah for me um I think it, it removing myself from negative situations which honestly gets me in a lot of trouble because I think because of the way that I remove myself, I'm just like, bye, I'm not doing this. Uh, <laughs> um, in fact, like I just gave some advice to some somebody else and I was like, ain't nobody got time to be building men anymore. Um, either you are or you aren't. And like that kind of became like the group catchphrase um, because I'm just like, bye. Like anybody just I'm not I'm not doing that so um yeah that for me that's it it's just like removing myself from negative toxic situations like my last job like we know like we talked about before um and just like investing in myself um so I get a massage as often as I can um I have taken time to like, like it sounds silly, but figure out how to comb and style my hair. 
which was something that always gave me a lot of grief. Um, uh, and when I say comb and style my hair, I mean like in a natural way. So it's not a secret that I'm black, right? Um, unless you're colorblind and you aren't good at telling. But anyway, um, just knowing how to wear my hair in a natural style um, hasn't always been a thing. I haven't always known how to comb my hair. So I've been straightening my hair for years. And then one day I just decided I'm going to look this up on YouTube. And I have some ladies on YouTube who teach me how to comb my hair. And I'm damn near 40 years old. So, <laughs> But to me, that's like taking that stress away. Because doing my hair used to be like a five hour event. And now it's about an hour and a half. So that like gives me some time back in my life just because I'm taking care of me, right? Um, so that's that. So that was a thing. And now I had one last topic that I want to talk about, but I know it's going to be long. So it is Black History Month. And I don't typically get very political. No, let me rephrase that. I don't get political on this channel like I never have before. Um, but let's do that for a second. So it's Black History Month and not that I feel like anybody owes me anything because I'm black and it's Black History Month, but you just think that people would be nicer to black people <laughs> to Black History Month. Um, so I recently became a part of a group trying to be diplomatic about this because I don't really like I don't want to like draw attention to the group or anything I'm just talking about my life so I became part of a small group of people and um there had been a situation oh, okay so okay I don't know how I can explain this without giving a little bit of detail I became a part of a small group of people who moderate a Facebook group and there was a situation in the Facebook group where a poster had used the word ghetto, which was like, it's one of those, one of those words is kind of like touchy. And some people think it's totally fine to say, um, and like using it as a derogative term, like, okay, first of all, I'm sure by now we all know that the word originated in Italy, the ghettos of Italy where the Jewish people were. That is neither here nor there because we were not in Italy and it is 2020. So that's not what the word means anymore. And y'all are going to respect that. So this chick, this redheaded white lady said that this other person that she knows is a ghetto kind of lady. And I replied to that thread and I said, pardon? What do you mean she's a ghetto kind of lady? What, what, like, what does that mean to you? Um, and I was here to give her a little education. Like, I wasn't rude about it, but like, no, ma'am. Um, and she even replied and she's like, I don't know what I've said that's wrong, but I'm open to learn. So I'm like, cool, let's break it down for you, girl. And I'm like, this is just not, first of all, it's not necessary for you to call someone a ghetto kind of lady. Like, just don't be calling people ghetto. Like, that's just not really in your, it's, it's not for you to say. Um, and it was unnecessary to what she was saying. So again, you really didn't need to do that. But, um, <clears throat> after I gave her a little lesson on how not to be racist, she then was like, thanks for your opinion, but it's not necessary. And I was like, oh, back the fuck up. Hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of like what happened in the group. Now, back to the moderating situation. So I simply said, look, I gave it the college try. Now she wants to be ridiculous about it. And that was kind of going to be it. But then people had to jump in with their opinions. And it was like, well, I don't see anything wrong with the word ghetto. And I'm like, okay, but I do. And like, I'm literally here telling you that I do. Um, and <laughs> yeah. 
Um, <laughs> and because I'm trying to, mm, like, there's parts that I have to cut out because they're too, like, identifying, right? So I was like, yeah, but there is a problem with using the word ghetto the way that it was used. And the meaning behind it was just not good. And so there was, like, a lot of back and forth about how people should be able to say whatever they want to say and someone told me one of the people in the group was like well I'm part black and I was like first of all if you're gonna start your sentence defending racist behavior by saying I'm part black I'm already not listening to you but okay so she's like I'm part black and I'm not offended by it and I was like okay I was like, well, I'm part black too. I was like, and while I'm personally less offended by it than a lot of people might be, it's still not going down. Like, no. Um, and then someone else jumped in and was like, I'm part black too. And it turned into this thing where I was like, you know, I'm not here to argue with you, but like, it's not okay, even if you're personally okay with it. And then it devolved into this chuckle fest of, oh, I'm 12% black and my kids are 13% black or 6% black. Um, they get it from their dad. And like for real, for real, like grown ass adults, like a group of grown ass adults literally devolved into making fun of what percentage black they were and why that makes someone using ghetto as a derogatory term okay because they're okay with it. And I really was like, uh, and then someone threw out the, you know, the little statistic about it or the little fact about it being originating in Italy because of the Jewish people. And I was like, yeah, that's actually correct, but it's neither here nor there because we're in America in 2020 and slavery happened and so does oppression and black people are being killed, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And legitimately she came back and was like you need to move on from this while they were still joking about their percentage of being black and not a single person in there with their percentage their part blackness jumped in to even be like don't you know like don't silence a person of color or you it's not for you to decide if a person of color is offended by something or what have you um like, literally nobody said anything. It was just a big fucking joke to them. And I don't even really have words for that. Like, they basically said that I was wrong for daring to tell someone not to be racist. Um, and then made a fucking joke out of the whole thing. Um... That doesn't have a lot to do with eating low carb, but it has a lot to do with me. I don't even, mm. So like I didn't grow up in a black community around black people. And so there's a lot of black culture that I don't really identify strongly with. Um, and so a lot of things that are used negatively towards black people, I don't always pick up on. Um, and so like sometimes I don't say anything because I'm maybe I don't even know. It's just the way that my life has been. But for some reason, this bullshit scenario that happened just like really hit me. And I'm pretty sure I spent the rest of the day crying. Not the rest of the day, like straight through, but like little pockets of time. Like I legitimately, like this is the first time that I've really been hit with like a, with like a personal attack 
on being black. You know what I mean? Like, there's, not that either one's okay, but like there's a difference between black people being attacked as a whole collective and me personally being attacked for being black. Like there's two different feelings, right? And this is really the first time that I ever felt victimized is that the right word i don't know like legitimately like personally attacked for being black and having an opinion about being black it was legitimate bullshit you guys like i have never in my life experienced adults behaving this way i don't even i've experienced adults behaving this way but there's always someone who is like the voice of reason and unfortunately that voice of reason has to be a non-black person because nobody apparently nobody gives a shit what black people think so <laughs> okay i'm getting on a really big tangent here um Yeah, they got me fucked up though. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be totally honest about that. And here we are. By the time you guys watch this, this will, will have been like three weeks ago. But right now, it was last week. So last week in black history, I was told to shut the fuck up as a black person. And I know that's not what y'all came to my channel for, but um, it happened. <laughs> it happened. The good news is, so let's tie this back into um, eating our asses off. The good news is that as shitty as I felt in that moment, in that day, I didn't do the usual thing and be like, I feel like trash. I'm going to eat trash. Um, I stuck to what I had planned to eat for the day, stayed within my macros. Um, I didn't feel like feeding my feelings, which is a big step. I mean, I frequently feel like feeding my feelings, which is where in the last video I talked about how when I go, when I have, I have low carb cheat days where I don't pay attention to my macros, but I still eat food that is on plan. Um, and so that frequently happens when I have like these like high emotional days where I'm just like, I can't and I, I'm gonna, instead of, I usually like, so like with Halo Top, I'll usually eat two spoonfuls. When I have those kind of days, I can eat like half the carton in one sitting. Um, but I did not have that kind of day. I didn't even think about overeating food or stuffing my face full of cheese or anything like that. So I think that's good progress, right? Yeah, that's good progress. Um, take the time. So, yeah. So, A plus for, like, I'm going to high five. How can I? I can't high. Okay, wait. I can high five myself, right? Ready? There we go. There we go. It's called clapping. Um, so good for me. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, is usually when I have those days where I'm like, oh, I gotta stuff my face, I usually drag James down with me. So it's pretty good that I didn't do that and that I didn't drag him down with me. Anyway, I'm gonna sign off now because. I don't want to be sad about thinking about it. And the battery's dying. I just got a warning that the battery's dying. So, thank you for joining us on Eating Our Asses Off. Um, Tea with Brie, the special two-part series. <laughs> um, finish your tea. And I will see you in a couple days. Right? Yeah. Oh, like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. It's at Eating Our Asses Off everywhere you go. All right? Thank you guys.